sport is definitely run on the skills of a player, however sometimes it is the physical attributes that matter for their success. Some players are born with that special abnormality of being extremely tall and it does make a difference in cricket, and not in just basketball or volleyball. Usually it is bowlers who are tall and thus extract a tremendous amount of bounce on a pitch to make cricket, which is said to be a batsman's game more fascinating to watch. Here is the list of 10 tallest cricket player of all time. Mohammad Rafan, Pakistan. The lanky Pakistani quickie was born on June 6, 1982 in the eastern Pakistan town of Gelmandi in Punjab. Although his height has been under some speculation for a while, Mohammad Rafan himself has confirmed that he is 7 foot 1 inch tall which easily makes him the tallest cricket to have played cricket till date, surpassing his idol Joel Garner. The lack of employment opportunities in his hometown forced him to quit playing cricket temporarily and he started working in a plastic pipe factory to support his poor family. But he never gave up his dream of playing cricket and the legendary Yakib Jod first spotted his talent in the game and called him to the National Cricket Academy in Lahore. Joel Garner, West Indies Also known as the Big Bird for the fact that he is a predecessor to other Caribbean pacers, Garner was born on December 16, 1952 in Barbados. He was the 6 feet 8 inches fast bowler highly known for the moralizing opposition batsman with the steep bounce he generated time and again. Working in tandem with the likes of fellow quickies such as Michael Holding, Andy Roberts, Colin Croft and a little later Malcolm Marshall, the West Indies were easily the world's number one test and ODA team in the 70s and 80s, even if they lost the 1983 World Cup final to India. But they did not lose a single test series for a span of 15 years. Joel Garner played in 58 tests between 1977 and 1987 and took 215 on wickets at an average of slightly over 20, making him one of the most efficient fast bowlers of all time. But it was in Oda cricket that he put his height to use with devastating effect. In 98 matches he took 146 wickets. He had the ability to unleash a toe-crushing Yorker time and again and obviously generate more bounds. Bruce Reed, Australia Bruce Reed shared the same height as Garner, making him the joint second tallest cricketer to have played the game at international level. He was born in the land of fast bowling in Australia, Perth on March 14, 1963 and as a result played for Western Australia in the Australian domestic competition. As a lofty and gawky left arm pace bowler, he made his international debut alongside the likes of Merv Hughes and Jeff Marsh in 1985-86 when Australia were in a slump. His ability to straighten the ball into the right-hander as well as slant it away to an extent, and with naturally steep bounds, made him instantly Australia's mainstay. His ultimate achievement was to take 13 wickets against England in the Boxing Day Ashes Test at Melbourne in 1990-91. Curtly Ambrose, West Indies He is the second West Indian to make this list. Curtly Ambrose was born in Antigua on September 21, 1963 and made his test debut against Pakistan in Guyana in 1988 and his Oda debut against the same opposition in the same year but in Jamaica. His skill was as a right arm fast bowler, especially with his partner in crime being Courtney Walsh. With Walsh, he formed one of the greatest opening bowling partnerships in history, as evidenced by the 421 wickets they shared in the 49 test matches they played together. His colossal 6 feet 7 inches frame was a threatening side for any batsman and although his pace fell away due to age, he still bowled excellent line and length and, due to his height, could extract humongous bounce from any pitch which is a danger to even some of the finest batsmen of all. Tom Moody, Australia Tom Moody was born in Adelaide on October 2, 1965. He was tall in terms of both his height and playing structure. He got rid of tentativeness against short bowling in the initial stages of his career, only to become a batsman who looks at his prime while hitting through the covers and down the track with immaculate power. He was also a more than a part-time, 
bowling medium pace often and also swung the ball to an extent, a safe slip fielder and a natural leader which was seen more in domestic cricket that he played for Western Australia and Worcestershire. His short test career did not take off after he was sacrificed as an opener in Sri Lanka in 1992-93, though he made a memorable comeback to the one-day team in time to play in, and contribute measurably to, Australia's 1999 World Cup win. He and Steve Waugh became the first two Australians to win two World Cups and this is something he will always be proud to have achieved.